Prince Harry has called his autobiography Spare. His older brother is the heir, so he's the spare. It's been a huge hit here in the UK, but is he the spare heir? If Prince William dies, is Prince Harry the next in line to the throne? No, Sir Harry's not the spare. Welcome to the wonderful and confusing world of royal succession. Oh, and watch this to the end, as you need to meet Tom. Tom has a stronger claim to the throne than even Prince Harry. So hang on to your crown and let's get into this. This is the wonderful and beautiful Hertford Castle, once a royal palace and home to the kings and queens of England for 300 years. It used to be a royal prison, so if I mess this up, it might be my new home too. The line of succession is confusing. In this country's Game of Thrones, there is a list. It's a legal list and it's fixed in stone. This is the current top 10. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars at number 10 is this week's top 10 line of succession and just holding on to a number 10 chart position it's Sienna Mapelli Mozzi. She's the daughter of our number 9 entry. Yes, it's Princess Beatrice, the king's niece and the daughter of number 8, the black sheep of the family, stripped of royal duties, but still on the list. It's the king's brother, Prince Andrew. At number seven, we have Lilibet Mountbatten Windsor, granddaughter of the king and daughter of Prince Harry. At number six, we have her brother Archie. At number five, dropping two places, it's the self-proclaimed spare heir with the ginger hair all the way from California, Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex. A new entry at number four, it's the adorable Prince Louis, son of Prince William. At number three, it's the cutest princess in the kingdom, Princess Charlotte. At number two, it's gorgeous Prince George. And of course, straight in at number one, top of the pops, next in line, and the heir with no hair, it's Prince William. God bless you, sir. The line of succession is weird. You can carry on adding people forever. There's an American chap who's worked it out to 5,000 places. You might even be on it. In fact, you probably are. Way, way down the list, but you're there. So there are thousands of spare heirs. Although, if you're a Catholic, you're not on the list. If your parents had you before they married, you're not on the list either. British primogeniture is Odd. When I shuffle off this mortal coil, my estate will be split equally amongst my children. I'm sure it's the same for you, but you can't do that with a monarchy. Otherwise, within a few generations, you end up with a right old mess. So it all has to go to one person, one heir. Everyone else is spare. The only way to move up the list is for someone above you to die. The only way to move down the list is for someone above you to have a baby. Once you are on the list, you are there for life. The only way to get off the list is to drop dead or become a Catholic. Basically, the whole thing is governed by the Bill of Rights 1688 and the Royal Marriages Act 1772, but mostly by the Act of Settlement 1701, all of which was put in place to stop Catholics sitting on the throne and to put boys ahead of girls. Back in 1701, they were serious about it too. You see, by 1701, Queen Anne had had 18 pregnancies, but none of her children had survived. It was clear she wasn't going to produce an heir. So they worked their way down the list to find the next in line. It's normally only really the top of the list that actually matters, but they were all Catholics. So they carried on down the list and down the list, all the way to number 57, the first Protestant on the list, Sophia of Hanover. Now, Sophia dropped dead, so the crown went to her son, George. He spoke German, he'd never been to England, he could barely speak the language, but yes, he said, I'll be the King of England. That's why our royal family is German. The 1701 Act of Settlement is still in force. The 1688 Bill of Rights is still good law today. Obviously, it's all a little bit sexist and racist, so we have changed it. Well, 
we changed it just a bit. We repealed the Royal Marriages Act and we passed the Succession to the Crown Act 2013. Royals can now marry Catholics and girls are equal to boys. So on Wednesday the 25th of March 2015, the day the Act came into force, there was a bit of a reshuffle. The grandchildren of the Duke of Gloucester, one a boy and one a girl, swapped places. I think you'd call that air replacement. Prince Michael of Kent was the 15th on the list in 1978 and then he married a Catholic, so he was removed from the list entirely. Air today, gone tomorrow. But on that Wednesday, the 25th of March 2015, he was back on the list. A new chart entry at number 34. But there are no Catholics on the list. You see, this is a Protestant country. The king is the head of state and the head of the church. If the king were a Catholic, he would have to bow to the Pope. Now, we are a fiercely independent island nation in charge of our own destiny. We're not having any of that Vatican Pope stuff telling us what to do here, thank you very much. Why? Because Henry VIII, six wives, all that stuff. Which is why we're here at Hertford Castle. Henry VIII liked to visit this palace and this is where his children lived. And what happened here has affected our history and our monarchy over and over again. I get that these people are royals, it's fun to talk about them, but these are real people. And these crazy rules have brought misery and worry to loads of them. For example, in 1820, George IV married Maria Fitzherbert, but she was a Catholic, so it wasn't a legal wedding. It was never recognised. He married again, this time to Caroline of Brunswick. Then he wanted a divorce from her, but he couldn't get one without the approval of Parliament. It ended up in a very public and embarrassing mess. Royal scandals are nothing new. Divorce is a problem. Under the Royal Marriages Act, the monarch has to agree the wedding of anyone on the list. The king is the head of church. The church forbids divorce, so royals can't divorce and they can't marry divorcees. In 1936, when Edward VIII wanted to marry Mrs. Simpson, he was met with massive opposition from the government, the royal family and the church. It was a heck of a stink. In the end, Edward simply gave up the crown and abdicated, all so he could marry Mrs. Simpson. He had no kids, so his brother became King George VI, father of our late Queen Elizabeth II. In 1953, her sister, Princess Margaret, nearly got married to Peter Townsend, a divorced war hero. She couldn't do it. In 1992, Princess Anne remarried, but cleverly, she did it in Scotland. The church in Scotland doesn't consider marriage a sacrament, so she sidestepped the Church of England's restrictions on divorcees remarrying. Very smart. Then, in 1996, Prince Charles divorced Princess Diana, creating a media firestorm that brings us all the way back to today. And who knows, led us directly to Prince Harry, saying to hell with all this nonsense, these days, divorce isn't such a big deal. It's lost its stigma over the years. In 2002, the Church of England finally allowed divorced people to remarry. Three of Elizabeth II's four children are divorced. The succession to the Crown Act 2013 fixed most of the problems. The Act was probably put in place to allow the then Prince Charles to marry Catholic divorced Camilla Parker Bowles. Camilla is now the King Consort, Catholic Queen Camilla. Meghan Markle, now the Duchess of Sussex, is also a divorcee, but Prince Harry was allowed to marry her without any fuss at all, and I do mean allowed. Still, to this day, the first six people in the list need the permission of the King to get married. Oh, and that brings us to Tom. Here's where it gets interesting. Tom is not on the list, but Tom could be. Tom could be at the top of the list. He could be the spare heir. Tom 
is a food critic. He's written seven cookbooks. He pops up on TV and radio every now and then. He writes restaurant reviews in the mail on Sunday. You can buy his pork scratchings, Mr. Trotter's Great British Pork Crackling. You can drink his beer too, Mr. Trotter's Chestnut Ale. Do, they're very nice indeed. Tom is the eldest son of Camilla by her first marriage. Camilla is married to the king. Tom's stepdad and his godfather is King Charles III. Tom is older than Prince William, but he's not on the list. To be fair, he's not the king's son. He's a Catholic too, but his mum is married to the king. It is unlawful to discriminate against somebody because of their religion. In theory, Tom Parker Bowles could go to court. He could argue that the Act of Settlement 1701 and the Bill of Rights 1688 are not legal, not valid, not good law. They are anti-Catholic. They are discriminatory. They are in breach of the Equality Act of 2010. The King is exempt from the Equality Act. But the government isn't. It's a good legal argument. Who knows what the courts would decide? He could argue, as the eldest son, he is the rightful heir. In theory, he has a claim to the throne of England. In theory, he could sue. He won't. I'm sure he won't. But he could, in theory. So he's the heir who's not there. There is one last odd thing about the list. If Prince William and his dad, King Charles III, were to both pop their clogs tomorrow, then you would go down the list to the next in line, which is, of course, gorgeous George, Prince George. He would become King George VII. But right now, today, Prince George is nine years old. He would be king, but he couldn't do the job. He's just too young, so he would need a guide or a regent. Under the current rules, what you do is you go down the list until you get to the first adult in the line of succession. That adult becomes regent, a sort of temporary caretaker king. And that person right now is none other than Prince Harry, the spare, the heir with the ginger hair. Look, I've got nothing against Harry and I wish him and his family well. But he's not really the spare. There are dozens of spare heirs. Just look at the list. He's not the spare so much as the regent rare with the facial hair. He's the backup boss in case of a tragic loss. And you know what? That's not a bad title for his next book.